Hey, hello everybody, welcome back to episode 2 of the tiny mini acrylic landscape paintings. Welcome to the channel everybody. Um, I try to upload about 3 or 4, maybe even 5 times a week. I make a bunch of different stuff, acrylic paintings, but also digital paintings. I'll put a link in the description and maybe you can check them out. Uh, for today we're going to be painting a super fun, super tiny, 7 by 7 centimeters tiny little landscape. And I was thinking about maybe painting a twilighty, moonlighty, um, lit up canyon uh, based on my visits to the states, mostly like Arizona state, um, wilderness. It's kind of like rocky desert landscape. landscape. And it uh, should be lots of fun, so uh, join me. It's super fun to do. You can try this at home and uh, paint along with me if you like. I'm just blocking in a bunch of like dreamy colors, so starting off with a little bit of blue and purple up in the sky, working my way towards the bottom, mixing up several different uh, layers of color. So we started off a little bit blue and purple at the top, then some light blue, now some orangey, purpley, reddish, and a little bit more orange here towards the bottom. And I'm using the same brush for all of these. I'm not really cleaning the brush at all in between, just kind of like smearing all the paint that's on the brush onto the canvas and then onto the next bit. Here I grabbed a different brush though and I'm just kind of thinking about where my lit up canyon is going to be. I, I was kind of thinking of like, you know, the sun is like last light and it might still strike some of the hill, some of the canyon, but not quite. Um, maybe some of the clouds are lit up too. I wanted it to be kind of like whimsical and dreamy, if you know what I mean, like uh, almost surreal kind of colors. So here I've got a different brush, it's slightly smaller, and I'm just rubbing in a little bit of this orange wherever I feel like it's going to be lit up. And then straight after, I loaded up that same color with a little bit of blue, turning it into this purplish color. And this is going to be like our shadowy side. So where it's orange is going to be lit up, and where it's a little bit more purple and blue, it's going to be our shadow side. So that's where the light is not going to strike. I like blocking in the colors that way just to put put in like a mental note of like this is this is kind of roughly what's happening uh and also as a rule of thumb the closer the things get to you so the closer to the foreground things are um the higher they can be in their vividness in color but also in contrast so i'm just uh darkening up this and and maybe like livelying up whatever comes closer so just a bit brighter colors towards the foreground here um and they can be a little bit darker as well. And I'm using this this very old fizzled brush just to put in a little bit of like a brush or like a bush kind of texture. Um, just because all the, the tips of the brush is like very uh, rigged and like all the brushes are kind of like set apart from one another. It's really good for making like grassy and bushy things. Just blocking it in there, not really caring too much about where it's leading up to. And already you can see like how the distance is forming between the lit up bit that we put in earlier and then the foreground that's a little bit darker. It really feels like there's like this big cliff or canyon that's separating those two sides, which is great and it's a super easy effect. You can do this too. It's super fun. Here I'm grabbing a little bit of a bright yellow, um, mix in with a little bit of white and I'm just highlighting some of these bits over across the canyon. Um, Whatever I feel like is catching that last little bit of sunlight of the day. Just dropping it in wherever. And that really sets it apart. Makes it look like it's lit up. And I was thinking while we're at it, and we're, we're thinking like mystical, whimsical, kind of like landscape things. I was thinking maybe up here, over up the top, maybe the moon's already out. Maybe there's a little bit of moonlight coming through. And blending in with a little bit of this last sunlight that's like catching the last little bit of the clouds or the clouds are catching like the last little bit of the sunlight. And I just smeared on a little bit of white and then grabbed a dry clean, clean brush and I just kind of like rubbed out the paint that I just put on just to get a bit of a gradient kind of effect. And here I mixed up a tiny bit of blue. I figured the shadowy side of this cliff could be maybe a little bit more, um, a little bit more of blue in hue, um, as if there's maybe like a shadowy side out there that's still like a little bit lit up by the moon, something like that. 
And same over in the background to set set that layer apart as well. I don't want it all to just be purple. Use that same color to drop in. Here's almost like, even though it's the same color, it's, we use it as a shadow color in the background. In the foreground, it can actually be the highlight color because this foreground bit's in the shade anyways. And I was thinking like, maybe the moon's lit up. Maybe the moon's already out. So maybe the moon can hang out here up top. But I figured this was a little bit too bright. So we're going to go over it a, a couple times. I was thinking maybe there can be like a little bit of a moonlight glow. So I'm just smearing some of this paint on, but I mixed it with medium, which means that it has a lot higher transparency. And I'm just grabbing the clean dry brush to just smear out what I just put on. And gives it a little bit of a glowy effect. It's a little bit wet at the moment. It's hard to see with the lighting, but it'll come back. I'm just dropping in a happy little moon. There we go. Using that same color to drop in a couple of highlights here and there. Doesn't really matter what they are. They can be rocks. They can be like big cliff kind of things. They can be whatever they want. I'm using a very dark bluish color here to put in a little bit extra shadow here in the foreground. Like I said earlier, the closer things are to you, the more the higher the contrast, so we can we can go a little bit more nuts with the shadowy colors. This is wherever you feel like there's going to be a shadow from the rocks, that's where you're going to put one in. Maybe it can be like a little tree over here. Maybe this is like the edge of the forest. And as soon as you go beyond the forest, you're going to look at this awesome cliff in the distance with this still lit up by the sun. Something like that. Imagine like doing a hike and you get to a spot like this. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? I like to, I, I try to imagine like kind of like scenarios like that in my head to help me paint. Kind of get a feel for what you're actually trying to put onto the canvas. But don't think too hard. It should be fun, you know? But I like coming up with little stories like that. Just gonna add in a little bit of highlight on the moon here and just a bunch of stars here in the sky, just with the very, very tip of this brush. It's a very thin brush. Definitely don't want to push too hard or you make a big blob. And, and there was actually a bit of excess over there, so I'm just grabbing a little bit of toilet roll to dab that off. Dry it up a little bit, and then we go over it again. Just wherever. A couple of highlights here at the bottom as if there's things glowing and things being lit up. And they can be whatever. They can be plants. They can be bits of rocks or twigs or anything, really. Just going to put my signature at the bottom. Hope you all had a good time watching this video. I hope you're going to try it too. Uh, if you liked the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also put in a comment of what you'd like me to paint next, like any kind of scenery, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you all so much for watching. Have an awesome day.